So our this lecture is concerned with the diabetic retinopathy. And in this video, we are going to learn about the clinical features like signs and symptoms of the diabetic retinopathy and different stages or types of the diabetic retinopathy. So first of all, we will discuss about the symptoms. Symptoms are actually the complaints. The patient of diabetic retinopathy will visit your clinic with the complaints. Those chief complaints are called the symptoms. And there are three different symptoms. First of all, remember one thing that the patient of diabetic retinopathy in initial stages will be totally asymptomatic without any complaints asymptomatic absence of any complaint so that's why it is also called a silent killer the diabetic retinopathy or diabetes mellitus right and the third the second and third complaints are the gradual vision loss or the sudden vision loss you know very well about the different signs of the diabetic retinopathy like we have discussed about uh, the microaneurysms we have discussed about the soft exudates hard exudates uh, hemorrhages retinal edema so all these complaints, if these all signs are at the level of macula or fovea, then it will cause a sudden vision loss. And if all these signs are at the level of periphery of the retina or the fundus, then it will cause a gradual vision loss. And now we will discuss about the different signs of the diabetic retinopathy. And we will learn about the signs in terms of the types or the stages of the diabetic retinopathy. So we have five different stages of the diabetic retinopathy and the first one is called the background diabetic retinopathy the second one is called pre-proliferative or the non-proliferative third one is called the proliferative fourth one is called the advanced stage and the last one is called the burnt out stage and in this video we are going to learn about the first stage which is called the background diabetic retinopathy so in background diabetic retinopathy we have different signs we have four major signs in background, the first stage of the diabetic retinopathy. The first sign is called the microaneurysms. The second stage or the second sign actually is called the retinal edema. The third one is called the retinal hemorrhages and the fourth one is called the hard exudates. And one by one, we will discuss about the pathophysiology of all these signs. So first of all, we will learn about the first stage or the first abnormal sign which is microaneurysm. So this is fundus and this is the arteries, the branches of the arteries and also the veins are going back to the optic disc carrying the deoxygenated blood and these are branches of the <coughs> central retinal vein and now we are going to learn about the microaneurysms. And remember that microaneurysm is actually the first sign is the hallmark or you can say the cardinal sign of the background diabetic retinopathy. This is the first abnormal sign in diabetic retinopathy which is called the microaneurysm. So we will learn the pathophysiology of the microaneurysms. So microaneurysms, let me define the microaneurysms then I'll explain the pathophysiology. The microaneurysm is actually the focal dilatation, the out pouch at the capillaries level, the focal dilatation of the capillaries of the blood vessels of the retina is called the microaneurysms. So now the pathophysiology suppose this is for example suppose this is actually the capillaries of the fundus right so we can zoom it over here remember this is a capillaries right and these the integrity the structural integrity of the capillaries is intact by the specialized cells which are called the pericytes right the pericytes are actually the specialized cells at the walls of the capillaries so what is the function of these pericytes these pericytes do not allow so these are pericytes these pericytes do not allow any content of the blood coming out from the capillaries to the retinal tissues right so due to these pericytes which are on the walls of the capillaries uh, these pericytes are actually the reason that the blood is totally com confined inside the capillaries. So we have different uh, blood contents like uh, we have red blood cells, we have white blood cells, we have platelets, we have lipids, we have proteins, we have plasma. These all are the contents or nutrients of the blood. But all these nutrients, all these essential nutrients are confined inside the capillaries. They do not allow to come in the retinal tissues over here. So if any of these essential nutrients will come out of the retinal tissues, it will cause an abnormality, right? So 
माइक्रो एनिज्म वट इज माइक्रो एनिज्म एज यू नो वेरी वेल दैट इन डायबेटिक रेटनोपैथी द शुगर लेवल इज इंक्रीज इन द पेशेंट राइट द ग्लूकोज लेवल इज इंक्रीज इन द पेशेंट ब्लड ब्लड वेजल्स राइट सो द माइक्रो मालिक्यूल्स और द लार्जर मालिक्यूल्स ऑफ द शुगर और ग्लूकोज विल हिट द वॉल्स ऑफ द कैपलरीज सो बिकॉज दे आर हिटिंग द वॉल्स ऑफ द कैपलरीज सो इट विल कॉज द लॉस ऑफ द पेरिसाइड सो दीज सेल्स विच आर स्पेशलाइज पेरिसाइड सेल्स दे विल लूज फ्रॉम द वॉल्स ऑफ द कैपलरीज एंड नाउ बिकॉज द कैपलरीज आर लूजिंग द पेरिसाइड सो इट विल कॉज अ डायलेशन ऑफ द ब्लड वेजल्स or the capillaries so this focal dilatation is called this out pouch is called this dilation of the blood vessels of the capillaries specifically is called the micro aneurysms so this is, micro aneurysm is actually due to the loss of the pericytes and why pericytes are losing because the sugar level level is increasing inside the capillaries and those sugar levels are hitting the walls of the capillaries so that's why the structural integrity of the capillaries wall will be lost and a out pouch or dilation will be formed and that out pouch or dilation of the capillaries is called the micro aneurysms so this is the pathophysiology of the micro aneurysms and now suppose for example over here this is the whole fundus as you can see over here and for example this is the capillary consider it as a capillary right for example this is capillary right and this is micro aneurysms right this focal dilatation is called the micro aneurysms right you know very well about the pathophysiology of the micro aneurysms right so this is the micro aneurysms the pathophysiology of the micro aneurysms and now the next sign was first one the micro aneurysms we have discussed and the next one is called first we will discuss about the retinal edema right so retinal edema what is retinal edema we have discussed that we have different essential nutrients inside the capillaries inside the in, inside the blood right and the first one is called the plasma second one is red blood cells white blood cells and uh, uh, and other lipoproteins etc right so as the micro aneurysms is formed over here and the pericytes are lost so this injured blood vessels you can say is very vulnerable to secrete or you can say to release the different essential nutrients from the blood vessel from the capillaries inside the retinal tissues so first of all the nutrient which will come out through this micro aneurysms from the capillaries is plasma because the plasma is the very less dense so first of all the plasma will come out right so if plasma will come out what is plasma plasma is actually a yellowish liquid right so plasma will accumulate in the retinal tissues because we have lost our micro because we have lost the pericytes so due to loss of the pericytes the plasma will come out and accumulate over here in the retinal tissues so a water filled cavity or you can say the plasma filled cavity will form right here in the retinal tissues so this water filled cavity or plasma filled cavity most more specifically is called the retinal edema right you know the water filled cavity anywhere in the body is called edema so because the retinal edema is occurring over here due to the secretion of the plasma from the capillaries inside the retinal tissue so that plasma filled cavity is called retinal edema so this is the pathophysiology of the retinal edema and next one the next sign is we will discuss first the hemorrhages right so hemorrhage what is hemorrhage you know very well anywhere in the body like in the brain for example we have capillaries brain capillaries like the capillaries of the central nervous system in the central nervous system like the eyeball like the retina the blood vessels are the blood vessels are reserved to contain the blood inside the capillaries the blood is not allowed to come out in the central nervous system tissues or the tissues of the brain so the blood will be confined inside the capillaries so if the blood due to any reason if the blood come out from the capillaries inside the tissues of the brain that is called the brain hemorrhages right so in case of the retina if the red blood cells specifically will come out from the capillaries inside the retinal tissues so that is called the hemorrhages which hemorrhages the retinal hemorrhages right because we are studying the retina so this is called the retinal hemorrhages 
we have three different types of the retinal hemorrhages. The first one is called the flame shaped hemorrhages. The second one is called the dot and blot hemorrhages and the third one is called the dark blot hemorrhages, right? So what is the specification of these hemorrhages? The first one, the flame shaped hemorrhages, remember, the flame shaped hemorrhages are the hemorrhages which are like the flame, right? So the flame, the, what is the location of the flame, flame shaped hemorrhages? The location of the flame shaped hemorrhages is at the, specifically at the retinal nerve fiber layer, RNFL, right? Remember, the flame shaped hemorrhages are there at the level of RNFL, the retinal nerve fiber layer and the dot and blot hemorrhages are located at the deeper layer of the retina, like the plexiforms, inner and outer plexiform layers, right? So remember, but remember, if, if you are talking about the hemorrhages, like flame shaped hemorrhages, dot and blot hemorrhages and dark blot hemorrhages, but if we studying, if we are diagnosing the first stage of the diabetic retinopathy, which is background diabetic retinopathy, remember, only two type of hemorrhages are there the flame shaped hemorrhages and the dark dot and blot hemorrhages these two type of hemorrhages are there specifically in the background diabetic retinopathy but if you are diagnosing some dark blot hemorrhages these this is not the sign of the background we will discuss it later in the later stages or in the later types of the background diabetic or in the diabetic retinopathy right so background diabetic retinopathy the hemorrhages are of two types flame shaped and dot and blot Dark blot hemorrhages is part of different types of the diabetic retinopathy, not the background. So now finally, we have discussed about the microaneurysms, we have discussed about the retinal edema, we have discussed about the retinal hemorrhages. Last sign of the background diabetic retinopathy is hard exudates. Now we will discuss about the pathophysiology of the hard exudates. Remember, we have discussed that if plasma will come out from the microaneurysms, it will cause retinal edema, right? So retinal edema is there. So now after the plasma, the plasma protein and lipoproteins, the lipids and the proteins will come out. Suppose, I'll make it with the black marker. So suppose from this microaneurysms, after plasma, the plasma protein will come out. So these black dots are actually the lipoprotein, the protein which is carrying lipids as well or lipids which is carrying protein as well. So these black dots are releasing from the microaneurysms because because at the level of microaneurysms our capillary is injured so from that injured capillaries after plasma the plasma protein will come out so normally in normal physiology there is no any plasma protein at the level of retinal tissues the retinal tissue is totally transparent the sensory retina is totally transparent so there is no any foreign body at the retinal tissues remember so now as plasma protein is coming out from the capillary in the retinal tissues so the immunity or the immune system of the retina will consider these plasma protein as foreign body so they will attack this foreign body so the macrophages will come and surround all these lipoproteins so a fight will begin between these macrophages and plasma and proteins so due to this fight, the dead bodies of the macrophages, the dead bodies of the proteins, the dead bodies of the lipids will deposit at this stage, at the retinal tissue. So due to deposition of the dead bodies of the, these three nutrients, macrophages, proteins and lipids, they will deposit at the level of retinal tissues. So that the deposition of the dead bodies of these contents is called the hard exudates. So we have discussed all the important or abnormal signs in background diabetic retinopathy we can repeat in just one minute so we have discussed about the different signs the first sign was the microaneurysms you know very well the focal dilatation due to the loss of the parasite is called the microaneurysms microaneurysm is actually the location where the capillary is injured right so because the capillary is injured the plasma will come out the liquid will come out so when the liquid will come out, it will cause retinal edema. After the liquid, after the plasma, the plasma protein and lipids will come out. So they will consider that the foreign body, macrophages will come out to kill. So due to this fight, the dead bodies of these macrophages, proteins and lipids will deposit at this retinal tissues and that is called hard exudates. And then the red blood cells will come out. 
the red blood cells when the red blood cells will come out from the capillaries in the retinal tissues they will cause retinal hemorrhages and two type of types of retinal hemorrhages are there the first one is called the flame shaped hemorrhages which is at the level of retinal nerve fiber layer and the second one is called the dot and blot hemorrhages and dot and blot hemorrhages are in the deeper layers of the retina so this is all about the pathophysiology of the first stage or first type of the diabetic diabetic retinopathy which is called the background diabetic retinopathy so if you find microaneurysms if you find retinal edema if you find flame shaped hemorrhages if you find dot and blot hemorrhages and if you find hard exudates then you will di diagnose the diabetic retinopathy at the first stage which is background diabetic retinopathy and now let's discuss about the second stage second type of the dr which is called the pre proliferative or non proliferative stage of the diabetic retinopathy